Yeah. Yeah, so Please yeah. raise and join the, me in the pledge. I pledge the pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the March 27th, 2017 uh, Selectman's meeting. Public comment period. Anybody wishing to make public comment? Charlie? Thank you. I just wanted to make it quick, but uh, Dred Charlie, can you just Dred state your name and Charlie Preston, 47 Glade Path, for those who don't know. <laughs> the dreaded sea I should say dread season is upon us this Saturday, April Fools, and it's no joke. The meters are gonna be running. So I'll just let everybody know. And um, again, I want to touch on the state parks plate. If you haven't registered your car yet, you know, or you're going to register next month, consider the state parks plate because you'll get 85, 83 days, I think, this year, the weekdays in school from April 1st to November 1st. You'll get 83 school weekdays for those that like to go to the beach when it's not so crowded. That's an entirely different group of people, but. I think we were both down to Ocean Gaming the other night there for the uh, police horses benefit. I think it was yep. the last three days. And people that have those places are going to be able to go to the Ashworth or the Ocean Gaming or you know, any of the establishments that are open along the front there. And there's half a dozen or so. So it's a good thing for everybody. So check it out at the State Parks Place. you got to do it when you register your car. And heads up, let the buyer beware on the uh, meters. They start this Saturday, April 1st. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to speak? Seeing no one, we'll go to the consent agenda. And what we're going to do on the consent agenda is number three, taxi business and operator's licenses. We're going to pull that off the agenda for tonight because there's more work that has to be done on that before we vote on that. So number three is taken off of the agenda. We have one, entertainment license, Logan's Run. Parade and Public Gathering Licenses, Memorial Day Parade and Ceremony Post 35, McCarthy Strong, Third Annual 5K Walk and Run, Annual Walk by the Sea and Picnic. Uh, three is pulled. Four, Raffle Permit for Experience Hampton, uh, Christmas Parade. Five, Use of Selectman's Room for Senator Hassan's uh, Office Hours. Uh, two, six, 2017 Veterans, Veteran Spouses and Veterans Total Disability Credit and Elderly. And that is it. I motion that we move the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, under the announcements and community calendar for us. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. I just wanted to make note of the, um, on April 8th, um, the Village Preschool does their Easter Bunny breakfast in the morning. Um, you can get more information if you go to their website or give the school a call. They're also, on April 8th, the rec department has their Easter egg hunt down the beach. And if you want more information, you can go to the uh, rec department. But they have that on uh, April 8th also. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you. Virginia, do you have anything for announcements and community calendar? I do not have anything tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bain. Negative, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, number uh, approval of minutes, March 13th, 2017. So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Appointments, Christy Pulliam, Finance Director. Good, Good evening. evening. Good evening. All right, so I'm here with the uh, monthly financials for the month ending uh, February 28th. There were uh, no reports for the month of January. I haven't been doing those the past couple of years in waiting to have the budget passed before we build all of our spreadsheets and get prepared to do the financials for the year. So, and it's pretty uneventful so far. So I will try and go through this quickly for you. And they are up on the website and have been distributed to the budget committee also, just so the board knows that. So it's the second month of 2017, and the expenditure target is 
The month's total income was $558,711. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $331,657, which is over the month's target by $76,082. The other major contributors to the month's total income were interest on taxes at $17,418, Building permits at $32,545. Departmental income at $14,030. Land rent at $168,974. I just will point out there that those bills always go out um, in March because they're due April 1st. So, real estate trust at $40,187. The expense summary uh, marked 18 and 19 of 19 show the year-to-date expenses by department. At the end of February, the operating departments without debt service but with open purchase orders were 15.82% of the budget, which is under the month's target by 0.85% or $208,894. Uh, let's see. When reviewing the report by line item, you will find some line items over the target related to timing in the bullets this month i will give a brief explanation of the lines that fall into this category i will also note some other items of interest uh, across the budget so basically i'm just mixed up the report a little bit for you guys uh, it's not in the exact same format but i'm basically going to point out that uh, some of the lines across the budget that you'll kind of see the same pattern instead of hitting them in each department. So under regular wages, in a lot of the sections, you'll see that they're around 17%. That's related to the accrued payroll, and the journal entry for that's never made until the audit's complete. So I'm still waiting to get all my journal entries back from the auditors. So once I have that, I'll reverse that. And so the regular wages, when some people see that over target, that kind of raises red flags because what happened, you know? So I just wanted to point that out. OT wages in some of the smaller departments are well over the target, but related to items like the town meeting uh, in the finance, there's end of year wrap up and pre preparation for audit uh, in the town manager's office. You have the deliberative session, so there's staff there for that, getting the town report ready and items like that. Repairs and maintenance and rentals and leases, uh, most of those are related to annual software contracts, licensing yearly rental agreements and other items. The bank buyback program is overexpended. It's at 107.58%. Uh, this will be one of those items that we'll need to look at closer when we budget for next year. More people participated than usual in that buyback program and therefore it was over target. I don't recall, it hasn't been over target for um, the last couple of years. In the police department, you will see that some of the OT line items are over target. I uh, will be watching those and I'm gonna make sure that the chief is aware of those items. Hydrants is half spent as a result of there being semi-annual bills for this service. So we get a bill in January and then in June, I believe. It's due in July. Public Works Department, several of the staff development lines are over the target of 16.67. Some other accounts to note here are under cleaning and maintenance. The hired equipment summer is at 83.2%. Uh, that's in relation to the purchase order approved by the Board of Selectmen for the Bicentennial Seawall repairs. And under snow and ice removal, OT wages and salt, which both of those lines are over target, but it's almost the end of winter, hopefully, until the fall, I guess, late fall. On page 16 and 17 is a list of the warrant articles passed at the town meeting, along with the articles brought forward from previous years. The bottom of page 17 is the accounting for the prior year encumbrances, showing that 37 have been expended to date. In fund 24, recreation fund, the beach sticker donation year to date is $1,640. <laughs> fund 25, which is the cable committee, the franchise received uh, this year, total $88,159. Fund 26 for private detail, the current balance is $126,360. Fund 27, the EMS, the balance in this account is $348,470. And the wastewater system development charge, the fees collected in 2017, total $7,182 with a balance of $92,106. Uh, there is 
board approved expenditures earlier this month for 43,100 from that fund. So that is what I have for you tonight. Questions, Regina? Uh, no, great report, Christy. So we're slightly, it looks like slightly under 1% underspent. Yes. Through the end of February. Yeah. Yeah, great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. I think, you know, the winter we've had, although it's January and February were kind of mild. March has been just the opposite. And uh, I think we're doing a good job, so thank you. Phil? Great job, Director. No questions. Thank you. Okay. Good job. I have a question. You said they're on the website, right? Yes. Now, if somebody wants to see them, sometimes people have a hard time figuring where to go. Yep. What would they do? They would go to the website? Yep, under documents and then into the um, finance department, and then they're listed there. I think that they're might be like four, three or four categories under finance, but one of them literally says monthly reports, and if you click on that, then there will be a link monthly to each year. Monthly reports in 2017, yeah, you right? go to they the click year. on that, and then bingo, it shows up. So they're very easy to find. Should be right there. Okay. The other thing, I always, it, 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 we always go up in, in motor vehicle registrations, yes. right? Every year. Yes, and this is higher than... Uh, and I can't remember now, but I did look at this last night um, when I was working on these reports, and I want to say that in February of last year, we were in the high twos or very low threes. So it's yeah, over we were, even like we were February of last year. I think it was. Okay, that would make yeah. sense because high twos, yeah. Yeah, and we, we, we hope that continues, but that's one of those things that. Uh, you never know, but it's. You never know. So that's one of those things we have to watch, isn't it? Yeah. You talk to some of the garage people and the ones that repair vehicles. People aren't repairing cars now, they're buying new because car prices right now are so low that they're buying cars because so obviously it's costing more to register. And so some of the garages are having a, you know, a difficult time because people aren't fixing their cars, yeah. they're buying new. Good for us. Absolutely. And then can you just explain so that people understand what the, what the bank buyback program is? Yep, it's um, for union and non-union employees, so it's a contractual item in regards to for Union employees, they can sell back a certain number of sick hours, either 84 or 108, depending on their union that they're under. So they can sell back that time for their balance as of 1231 of the previous year. It's processed in this year, but it's from their balance there. So anything over, I think it's 400 sick hours, I believe, they can sell back either the 84 or the 108. And then for non-union employees, it's in regards to their leave time. Anything over 240 hours or 210 hours, up to 500 hours, they can sell back. And the purpose for all of the sellback across the union or non-union is they can pay for their health insurance for the year, dental insurance, make a contribution to their 457. They have different options. The benefit for the town in this is that it reduces our uh, compensated absences that we would have to pay out when somebody leaves. So. That's kind of something that was been has been negotiated in a long time ago now, it seems like. I've been here a while, so I kind of forget when these things come into play. But So it's basically like selling back leave time to the town. Okay, but it's win-win. It's the town makes out also. I believe so, yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Good, good report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor. Good evening. Tonight begins the uh, presentation of uh, 2016 abatement uh, recommendations. Um, tonight you've got 13 that I've submitted before you. Six were recommended for denial. Seven were recommended for approval. And that total is uh, $3,462.41 on those seven. So if you have any questions, I can answer those. Regina? I have no questions on them. Well, I looked through them and uh, I didn't find anything that was out of line. Now, what is the total sum figure for those tonight? Tonight, uh, for the seven approvals, $3,462.41. <coughs> I so move that amount at the uh, assessor's request. Second. All in favor? Very good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate it. Yeah. I got one question for you real quick while you're sure. here, Ed. I had a, uh, a gentleman call me today uh, that lives on number two post road. Yes. Did he call you? No, I think I heard he was in the office. Okay, I, I so as long as he came in and saw you, I directed him to come see you. So. Yeah. Okay, uh, housing numbers and... 
Yeah, I haven't looked at it yet, but it seems to be something we may need to okay. address. So, yeah. thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Next, Candace Stalmack, development of a blasting ordinance. Thank, thank you. you. Do you want to sit? Down, you can. And relax, or you can stand. Oh, I'd rather stand. All right. Anyway, Candace Stelmack, 488 High Street. Um, you're probably aware of why I'm interested in the blasting ordinance, because some of the development that's going on in my neighborhood. And I was surprised that there wasn't one in Hampton. There's a noise ordinance, um, but no blasting ordinance. And in talking, I called around all the other towns in the county to see who had one and what they thought about them. And one gentleman in a nearby town said, well, most of the development is out in the west part of town where, you know, it's undeveloped. There's no reason to have it. In our, and I go, well, what if you have a fire and somebody wants to put in a high rise? And I mean, so people don't really give it much thought until an event happens. And I'm one that's fallen into that category. Um, but the reason I'm thinking that we need one in town, there's ledge everywhere. I mean, Charlie just mentioned to me there's ledge on his street down at the beach, and who would think in the middle of the marsh, in the end of Island Path? <coughs> I know there's at least five areas near me that have huge outcroppings, and Mill Road, you can't miss them. They're, you know, 30, 40 feet high, and they are everywhere. So I think it's, it, would be, it would be nice to have it here to make sure that when people come to town and they want to do some blasting, that they, they look at this list that may give them some second thoughts about doing it, in a residential area or near the aquifers or, or whatever. Um, I don't think the state regulations are strong enough at all. And when I've seen the other towns, how they've gone into the particulars, the star winner I've found so far is Northampton. They have like a 10 or 12 page blasting ordinance that protects their citizens. And I think that's what we need to do. It's not only the, the blasting and, and the flying debris and the vibrations, it's the noise level that could go on for a month. And there's no way to convert how you have regulated the noise down the beach, because they, they measure it differently. And I'm not in the science field, so I can't convert the noise level. But I know there's an irritation level for, for people involved in the blasting. They have a level where, you know, if you do this constantly all day long, you're going to drive people crazy. I thought that was a nice additive. I mean, it's realistic. Um, but the other reasons is just not only to regulate the detonation of the explosives, explosives, but I think we owe the, the citizens um, to be informed about what's going on and what their rights are. Um, I think the state area that you have to um, do a pre-survey on abutters is 250 feet. Other towns go up to as much as 1,000 feet. I mean, they take this seriously. If you're going to damage somebody's home, even if they're 999 feet away, they should be included. So, I mean, it's, it probably is telling people that want to come in and blast that it's going to cost you money, and it's going to take you time, and you're just not going to rush this through because we respect our citizens' rights. And that's what I'm hoping for. Now, the one thing that I did not understand at all, maybe you can help me, is one town had a selectman's ordinance, and they developed it. And then nine months later, they came up at the March warrant article period and voted it in. I don't know how you would handle that. Are you familiar with the Suckman's ordinance? Mr. Manager, there is permission in the statute for the selectmen to enact certain ordinances. I have yet to find a provision in the statutes that allows the town to enact an ordinance by selectmen's ordinance or town meeting ordinance dealing with blasting. And I've looked at several of the ordinances around us and none of them address the issue correctly. Even the ones that have been adopted, they don't list blasting at all. 3139, which allows us to enact local ordinances, mm -hmm. doesn't answer that question at all. It's not specific. So what I'm thinking of, we'll do, do some more research because there's got to be something somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and if there isn't something somewhere, then we need to introduce legislation to give us the right to do that, which should happen. I agree. Thank you very much for your time. Regina, you have any questions? Well, if so we don't have a said blasting ordinance, but is there a certain procedures that maybe we would have in place for blasting? Like I know your concern is your house 
Well, right. it's not only mine. Within, but, well, within yeah, but it, this radius, has to do with the blasting that's going to occur on High Street yes. yeah. in a couple of weeks, I think. Right. I don't know when they're starting. Um, we have the right to regulate things through the planning procedures to get a permit to exercise the rights to build on a piece of property. And that's what we're attaching our regulations. We don't have regulations, but attaching requirements to so they have to do certain things. But there's no statutory reference to that. So the, only, the only one I can find is the state regulations. And they're about as complete as chicken noodle soup without chicken. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't give you what you want, and there need to be certain scientific measures that are taken in order to regulate blasting. Uh, and we had the discussion on the piece of property behind you. Um, that they weren't going to use mats to cover the blasting. And I said, no, absolutely positively not. The blasting area is not covered with protection mats. There's no blasting. And the fire department ordered that because they regulate the explosives, not the blasting. Uh, it does, we do have a regulation uh, that says you can't store a blasting material on site unless it's in a commercial area and it's protected. Mm -hmm. So they can't store anything there at nighttime, from what I can see. And we're going to try to find out where we can get some more regulatory power in that area. But it may just be that we're going to have to clamp down through the site plan approval and, and the approval from the selectmen about doing certain things as far as construction is concerned. Tie it to that. Well, my uh, issue with some of the discussions that were going on is there was some misinformation being thrown around. Oh, yeah. So I purposely looked up how someone like me would fight back after the fact. I could have a lawsuit go on for 40 years because sure. I don't have the bank behind me and the, and the insurance policy behind me right. and the attitude of the blasting company is to protect themselves. They're right. well within their right to do that. But the examples that I, I think I had given Fred and a few other people were if you're harmed, forget it. You're, you're really up the creek without a paddle. Without them filing some security with the town. Even then. Substantial security that the town can call to do repairs on private properties surrounding the last site within a certain distance, specified whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not much that can be done. You're correct. You're going to end up suing them in order to collect. Yeah, thanks a lot, Brett. <laughs> I don't want to do that. That's just the law, right? I, know. I can't do much I know. about that. I know. That's why I'd like to make sure that the regulations up front are so onerous that they'll think three times before coming there. All the right. other thing is about the mill. The mill is not insured at all. Yeah, I know. And even though it is so-called irreplaceable, we could have that thing back up. If, if it fell down and fell apart and everything, we have guys that do that work and that are very familiar, and we have all the measurements there. We could build that thing in the exact same way, and I would like to have that considered, not calling that irreplaceable, but will be replaced at such and such a price. Well, my concern isn't necessarily the mill, but the wall is directly behind it. Mm-hmm. Because if that wall were to collapse yeah, yeah. because of something that was done and sitting on bedrock, yeah. then all of that, um, and I don't know how many thousands of cubic yards of material are behind it that's mush mm -hmm. over, over the centuries of accumulated that, that's all going to move. I and and it's not try. rare <laughs> that within a thousand feet you can have some major damage to ledges. Oh, yeah. That is not rare. And that's why I would also like to see a geotechnical uh, analysis done before they are allowed. Because the blasting site is between me and Fred. Yep. And, that's I how close that's, it is. Now, they say they're not going to do that. that. Well, it runs under my house. Yeah, right. I have I have a basement in half my house that's this big because right. it's it's got rocks and it's all covered with cement now. Yeah, right. Um, but it's just too dangerous for all the ledge that's around there in that whole neighborhood. It, could, it can shake it enough that uh, disturbs the water, creates the, the silt going up into the water and back down to... Ledge is um, a tremendous magnifier of force. And it, I, I, I was just by chance happening to look at some pictures the other day of the 1967 earthquakes in Alaska. And there were sections of roads that were disappeared 20 feet mm -hmm. into the ground. Yeah. Uh, and they were on ledge. But the ledge moved because of the earthquake. And it magnifies that force tremendously across the entire ledge area. So you have to be very careful about what you're doing, and you have to take the security that's required to, to protect people in that area. If they don't want to provide it, they can't blast. That's my opinion. Good. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Rusty? 
All set. All set. Thank you. I, I sympathize. When I was driving here today, I looked at your house and I looked at that that rock right behind your house and I looked where they're building, and it really is. There's not a lot of room in there. Well, if you walk their lot and you see what was attempted, there's a hole in there where they attempted it in the '60s. It's got to be. It's got to be 90 to 100 percent rock. Right. I'd say at least half of my lot is all ledge. We know the mill is. And if you drive up Mill Pond, you'll see huge outcroppings. So it's everywhere there. So I think we really have to look into it. It's all connected. So right now they've had their site plan approved, I believe, haven't they? They were no, before the planning no, board. No, wasn't they have approved. not. All right. So right, they can't go any further right now. They've got to get the site plan approved. They have certain permits they've got to get from the fire department, from the police department, from the Department of Public Works. And we have some power in that area. So, so. we can make sure that we're well on top of as covered as we can get yeah well the blasting is not the only issue i mean no. you're gonna I, I wanted to get a recording and let it play while i talk to you of constant da, 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 all day long they're, if, what they can't blast the newest little sketch they threw out was they're not going to blast within 50 feet of my house but they're going to be doing the blah, 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 and, and you know all of this noise of the the um, rock being removed yeah. my husband and i work out of our house so that'll be a joy and uh, everybody around us is, you know, like 50 and over. Got a lot of um, the uh, 55 and over housing, brick apartment buildings. The people across the street are going to be up on stilts raising their house next summer. I mean, there's a lot going on, and I don't know that everybody is aware of this. And I think not only the property owners, but the residents in all these apartments should have some say in it, too, because it is going to be disturbing. Thank you. Thank It'll be you. a lot of racket. There's no question. Not good. So we're going to look into... Well, it has to take place during the planning board discussion. And I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of the fact they've issued a permit yet. Okay. But that's going to have to be taken into consideration. And then there are permits that need to be issued by the fire department, that needs to be issued by the police department, that needs to be issued by public works under our existing ordinances. Uh, and those are going to have to be fairly strict just to protect people. And Phil's going to make sure the state does something. Yes, whatever you say, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Town manager's report. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, property owners, and I keep on repeating this because we're getting down to the wire on this. Property owners who desire to obtain an exemption under the statutes for elderly, veterans, blind, or current use must come to the assessor's office and obtain the necessary forms to apply. Their completed applications must be submitted by April 15, 2017. Some of these applications are not easy, so please come in early and get this done because it's very important. The Hampton Beach precinct exemption must be applied for also by April 15th. Uh, the forms are available in the assessor's office and they'll help you, th they'll help you fill out these forms as necessary explain to you what, what's needed and, and why. The town of Hampton Falls is looking to set a date for the preambulation. The previous uh, walkabout was performed on April 29, 2010. Uh, they'd like, to, like you to advise the board, uh, their board as well as this board, to make a decision on, on when you want to meet on this issue. And I did have a chance to talk to the uh, administrative assistant up there and uh, informed her that, uh, the town administrator, I mean, informed her that it shouldn't be so wet that you wouldn't sink in up to your eyeballs. Um, and obviously it helps if there's no snow on the ground because some of these things are really buried if, 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 if there is. Uh, so I think it's sort of an, an act that's in temporary limbo at the moment until we can find out what's out there and, and, and the status that it's in. Uh, also, the preambulations for Exeter, Stratum, and Northampton are to be completed in 2017. Uh, would the board like to proceed in some fashion to dispose of the uh, deadlined fire engine 2 that's in the beach station? Um, it's obviously not going to be able to be used by us, the fire engine. Uh, and I just, I just kind of want the board to think about, do we want to get rid of it at this point? How do we want to get rid of it? What's the value of it to us? Um, pretty much zero at the moment. I mean, is um, it just taking up space? Is, is it in their way? It's just taking up space at the moment. So what, what's there? 
prerogative. What would they like to do? They'd like to have it out of the station. Um, obviously, but, it's not something we can run for a fire. Right? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Bartle, I don't want to steal your, your thunder there, Skipper. Um, can we just have a statement from the uh, fire chief on what he wants to uh, do to... Uh, Execute this. Well, he, he wants to know if you want to get rid of it. Well, if I'd, I'd just like as a member to have uh, the fire chief sure. write a position paper and a short yeah. paper what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. That's all. What okay. his proposal is. Exactly. All right. Um, buy it. I don't think he'd buy this one. <laughs> Frames. I may not be that smart. <laughs> that <laughs> stupid enough to put another uh, bid in. Yeah, there you go. Uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, and I think it's important for people to understand this, we're going to be. There was a large pine tree on on uh, Academy Avenue across the library that had a major uh, branch or a section of the tree came down during the, the uh, recent storm we had. The tree needs to be removed, uh, and we're going to do that. It's going to be on Wednesday, March 29th, and it will be from at least 8 a.m. to 12 noon. The road is going to be closed from the first entrance uh, to the parking lot for the school all the way down to Winnicott Road. Um, there will also be no access to, to the, uh, the walkways along Academy Avenue. Uh, the children's park will be closed because the tree is that large. We have to bring a crane in to cut the sections off and take it down. Um, and we've received an inquiry about taking all the pine trees down the street. but. We don't have any evidence at this point that there's anything actually wrong with them. I've suggested to Public Works that we contact UNH, as we did for the large pine tree next to the library, and have somebody come over and bore the bore test the tree. They take a very small bore sample out completely through into the center of the tree to see whether it's red-hearted or rotten for all intents and purposes. So we are planning on trying to have them tested, and if there are any trees up there that need to come down, we'll come back to the board and explain what the process is. But this one needs to go, and it will be done on the 29th, which is Wednesday. So don't want people you know, walking down the street or trying to drive down the street. It will be closed. There's no way through on Academy Avenue in the morning. Uh, Stormwater Coalition, we received a report from the Stormwater, Stormwater Coalition today, and I've given that to the board. Uh, it'll be on the agenda for next meeting. Uh, if we do not get together with the coalition and appeal, uh, the recent MS4 requirements that were handed out by the EPA um, and joined with the, uh, the group to do that. Uh, we have not much time, but we do have some time. Um, and next meeting would be important for us to do. Um, they've given us some parameters on size of uh, population and what it's going to cost for uh, membership and so forth. Uh, it's the only thing that we can use to try to hold back the EPA regulations and try to get them tempered. So you may wish to do that. You may not after you've reviewed this, but I'm bringing it up now because we will put it on the, on the agenda for the next meeting. And that's it, sir. Regina, any questions for the manager? I have no questions. Thank you. Rusty? <clears throat> not at this time. Mr. Bean? Excellent report, Mr. Welch. Sir, thank, thank you. you, Mr. Chairman. Could, I, I just have a couple of things. Number one, on Wednesday, March 29th, mm -hmm. how will that affect the school? The school, they'll still have access to the school, but only from the upper end of Academy Avenue. Okay. Down to the first entranceway. Right. That's so as far as you'll that. be able to go. And the other thing is, could you just briefly mm -hmm. explain what MS4 is? Because the public oh. might not understand why we would be interested okay. in MS4. MS4 is the federal regulations, so-called. <clears throat> from the Environmental Protection Agency that regulates stormwater. Um, they have passed a brand new set of regulations, and we are fast approaching to be the only state in the United States that will be regulated directly by the EPA. Uh, and their, frankly, their think tank in Washington is going a little nuts. We have to test <coughs> at least once a year every outfall of every culvert system in the town. If we find any contamination within those outfalls, regardless of what it is or how small or how large it is, we have to clean the outfall and we have to test it every quarter for the remainder of the year. And then we have to keep on cleaning it until we find the source of the contamination and then we have to take care of the source of the contamination, whether it's on public or private property. To give you an idea of what the problem is, <clears throat> 
when you go down the beach, um, you have a lot of seagull droppings, and they end up getting into the storm drain system and into the harbor. That's going to penalize us for every single unit down there because they exceed the uh, quantity of material that can be deposited in the harbor. It's going to be very expensive. Uh, we're estimating that to be somewhere in the area of $200,000. We talked about this the other day with some folks who were concerned about it, and they're estimating it's going to cost between two hundred and fifty dollars and $500,000 a year for a town to do this. So it's a very labor-intensive, uh, very difficult situation to get through, and we really don't know what it's going to cost until we actually start performing it. But we're going to have to do these tests on a regular basis. That's going to occupy the wastewater treatment plant personnel. Uh, we're going to have to go out and do grab samples on the, on, the, on the street on a regular basis and just proceed through the town with testing. Every time we find something wrong, we're going to have to do a significant amount of work to try to clean it up. Uh, I think a good example would be Westridge. <clears throat> As you know, we, we had found some people uh, taking care of cleaning up their dog leftovers in their yards. <clears throat> and what they've been doing is dumping them down storm drains. That's one of the streets they've been doing it on. And we've cleaned it, and every time we go back in the middle of the night, somebody puts that deposit back in. At one point, one of the catch basins was almost full. And those catch bases are six to seven feet deep. Uh, it had gone all the way down through the drain system and into the marsh at the bottom of the street. We have to clean all of that up at the taxpayer's expense. So uh, these can get to be very expensive propositions. Uh, but that's, and, and it's 261 pages of regulations. Now, why is New Hampshire one of the only states that falls under? Well, I think there's two reasons. <clears throat> One, the state hasn't applied to be exempt. And the reason that I think the, the second reason is that they apply to be exempt, then the state has to make their own regulations. And under the amendment to the Constitution, Article 28A, when they force those in the town, they have to pay for it. If they enact federal regulations as, as it sits now, they don't have to pay it to the town for anything. It's all of the town, 100% of it, even the, uh, the uh, divisions regulations in Concord. If there's a something that has to be done and they have to uh, assign personnel to it, technically we're responsible to pay for those personnel. So that's I think those are the two primary reasons. So two things: one, we should watch that coalition oh, very closely. closely, and number two, again, people should not be dumping any kind of waste in a in a catch basin. Oh, yeah. It's that's not there for that purpose. It can be very expensive on everybody. Anybody else? Anything else? Okay. Uh, old business. I have one thing, and, and I think would the recount come under old business? Yes, sir. Okay. It certainly is old business. On this Thursday at 9 o'clock in the morning, we need three selectmen to be here for the recount. I can be here. Rusty can be here. Mr. Bean? Uh, I would nominate Rick uh, Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a second. <laughs> I'll second that since I'm in Florida. <laughs> if Rick Griffin is not available, are you available? Well, this is the first I've heard about it. What's I, I just heard about it today. The, the recount is on the uh, article. Of the public works article. Public works the equipment article. Right. And the lost by one vote. Thursday night. Uh, do, do we have a vote or any discussion on the Griffin nomination? <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> what time is the uh, Griffin nomination? Uh, nine o'clock in the morning. Nine, nine a.m. And is it just one one article? Yes, just yes. one article. It's and what's it on? It's the, the public works equipment. Public works equipment that lost by one vote. And we're starting at six in the morning. Starting at nine. Nine. Starting at nine in the morning. And is the, if, if Mr. Griffin cannot make it, we, 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 if you uh, if he refuses your order um, and he's in town, uh, I will do it. All right, because because Jane told me today. The town clerk told me today that they have to have three selectmen there. Okay. Thank you for the advance notice, Mr. Chairman. Well, I just found out, so. I, I didn't want to interrupt your skiing schedule or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> then send an email out <laughs> or, or a request out. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. I like nope. the skiing schedule. <clears throat> New business. The joint operation plan with DREAD 2017. Mr. Chairman, I've um, they haven't responded to us. We haven't asked them about anything. Uh, this is to start the process. What I've done is I took the 2016 
plan and and uh, put it in 2017 form with a renewal on April 1, 2018. And I eliminated, uh, let's see, they were proposing to put in a construction at our uh, at our uh, transfer station where they would build ramps and other material uh, so they could run their uh, the material up in, in the truck they're using uh, the, the material they collect at the beach every morning uh, they would run it to our transfer station and dump it in open containers which they would then haul away and my understanding from public works is that they're trying to do some things down there to clean that up they don't want to have the horde of seagulls following that up from the beach and having problems down there and uh, they need the area that's there now it's, it's shrunk down pretty significantly because of the amount of compost and other material we're holding down there uh, the other thing would be that uh, uh, they have permission to access the waterfront through bicentennial park on the north end of the park there is a driveway which we block off in the winter time that they would like to use to, to be able to get on the north end of the beach and clean the beach up and so forth. I, I don't have a problem with that. <clears throat> what I did was I put a provision in that if we were working on the on the seawall, that they could not use it if we so designated. Because I think that's important. If we're actually down there with construction equipment, they're not going to be able to get by even at low tide. So I don't want to have a complaint later on that we sort of didn't tell them, didn't put it in right. Anything else on that? No? Trina? No. So are we going to, as far as that first one, you said they want to now haul everything from the beach to our transfer station? Yes, that's what they used to do, and it caused a significant amount of problems for us over a period of time. Okay. Uh, but they said they would be responsible to haul the, uh, the uh, roll-off boxes, which they would put down there. They're 40-yard boxes, uh, that they would haul them off. That hasn't always worked well in the past, but uh, Public Works is not for that idea. Okay. They have room out at the state shed. They've been doing that at the state shed right along. I think yeah. they should continue. And, and yeah. is there a reason they don't want to do it at the state shed, besides just being more convenient? <clears throat> it used to be in our, our, our regulation, that the, the, the JOP, that they would do it at the town, the town shed. And that didn't work out very well, so we had it discontinued. And they negotiated a contract with their supplier that cleans the beach. And they put those containers right behind one of the cottages down in Epping, which we fought viciously, and got them to be moved to a place where people would be able to do something with their windows open in the summertime. Uh, and they've been doing it down there ever since. And it was in their contract with their vendor. So it won't change anything from what they're doing now. Ms. B? Nothing, sir. You want right, to I, I, read it now? You want to give a week on this, or do you want to go ahead? And I think the board needs to read it and understand it. And I think we, and I think we need a full board week. here to yes. to go over it. So right. I think if we all look it over this week. Yeah. And, I mean, do we have a time limit on when no. it must be done? No. Well, suppose it's supposed to be done by April 1st, okay? okay. But uh, I think last year's was done by July something. We can bring it back in two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, not a big deal. We're going to continue yeah, we'll to do what we're doing now until it's changed. Okay. So that sounds good. Oh, three weeks. All right. Bring it back on three weeks. That's fine. Number two, uh, three. three. Municipal weeks. budget committee requests. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may, Mark, do you care if I do a little summary first? No, uh, I was just going to say if the board wanted until you had a full board to take this up, it could be put off for a week. Okay. We have a quorum. Yeah, it's up yeah. to you. Go ahead. I really number one. I mean, that is to have Mark go to an April meeting, which I'll let him address that. That's his own schedule. But number two, I want to say, I actually talked with Steve LeBranch, and he's telling me he would have no interest to even bother to try to reach out to Steve Buckley at NHMA. He'd rather just, you know, if he had a legal question, go to town council and ask. So I just want to let the board know that I think that would work out a lot easier for everyone. And then as far as the NHMA going to a budget committee meeting and having a 91A. Can I just ask you, could you read each one? You went one and oh, two. I'm sorry. The All public right. might not realize what we're talking about. All right. So 
For number two, members of the budget committee had requested that we allow Steve LaBranche as chairman to be able to direct NHMA legal counsel. Well, in talking with Steve LaBranche, he said he probably would not ever do that and would prefer if he had a legal question to just go to town council and ask or call or email or however they want to communicate. Um, number three, uh, the Board of Selectmen would inquire as if not NHMA could come to their May meeting and do a presentation similar to what's happened in prior years, talking about 91A, all different types of issues, budget committee, uh, legal requirements, what, what their functions are, what they're not. And also talking with Stephen LeBranch, we thought maybe it would be better if Mr. Manager, we do have one the town is allowed to have one meeting for free? Yes, that's correct. From NHMA? That's that correct. maybe there could be a board of selectmen request to have a meeting for everyone in town that would like to attend, all elected officials, department heads, whoever like to go, and you know the budget committee, obviously, if they like to attend and go over all issues. 91A, anything that anyone's not sure about. So I would like to maybe present that as the request after speaking to the chairman. And also, there was a legal invoice received for Attorney Gould out of Concord <coughs> that they would like to request that our town council perhaps call Attorney Gould on since we were under the impression we wouldn't be getting billed for anything. And then the final request was that Board of Selectmen allow Steve LeBranch's Budget Committee Chair to meet directly with the Board of Selectmen Chair and the Town Manager on appointment. But again, after talking to Ch the Chairman of the Budget Committee, and I would feel that it would probably just be better that we keep the same procedures we had in place last year as far as requests go. But I want to formally request these items to the Board of Selectmen in this public meeting, and I will let Town Council address number one. Uh, number one um, talks about a, uh, some sort of presentation at the April 18, 2017 meeting. I'm actually out of state at that time, and that that, that particular meeting won't work on my end. Uh, it's been a hard uh, winter and spring in terms of schedule and so forth, and uh, I'm needing a break. So uh, if that's all right with the board, um, it's my understanding that what some members desire is that not so much a training but a open public session where there is a analysis of these emails which the board has thankfully relieved me of having to do uh, what is needed is that is a training session in the context of a non-meeting with legal counsel where i can give them advice as to uh, with some examples but not a full blown inquiry as to uh, proper use of uh, email correspondence. But again, not at the meeting on April 18th. Rusty. Well, <clears throat> I, I think we ought, the, the Board of Selectmen ought to get a hold of the NHMA, have a meeting, it will be our meeting, it doesn't necessarily have to be on a Monday night, but we invite all members of elected boards to come in and discuss it. I think uh, if there are any other questions that I think both the Budget Committee and us have said enough's enough, what's done, let's, if there are, if there's some emails in question, obviously they already have all the emails anyways, but if, if he would like, if the Town Council would like to send them a list of the emails that you felt they were, and then they could bring that back. They could come up and talk about it at that meeting with the NHMA. I don't think you need to be there at that, any of that. Uh, so I think that's... And then we just move forward. Mr. Bean? Yes, sir. Uh, this board has voted on lines of communication. I think it's effective. That's why we have um, our liaison to each committee. That, that's effective. Uh, you, you move away from that, it's mayhem. It's been voted. It's board procedure. It's served this town well. And when we haven't... Uh, um, followed that uh, mayhem follows. So I uh, am in support of that. Continuing education for anybody that cannot master uh, the uh, 
um, fairly simple uh, uh, requisites of holding legal meetings and communications on the board. I'm all for that, and sometimes uh, there are different uh, learning curves for those. Happy to do that. Uh, the $425, I'm looking at this memo that's been prepared. Uh, my opinion has been clear on that. It was not a legal expenditure. Uh, it was uh, uh, messed around with with the date. And uh, for us to authorize any town funds for something that was not done legally uh, would make us complicit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. My, my feeling is uh, the same, that we have procedures for communication which are fine. They work fine. There, there's no problem with them. There's no backup. Uh, on the meeting with NHMA, if we have one training session, I can't see using it for one board. I think we did that before, but I think we should open it up to the whole, every board in town, every member, department heads, so the people can come and have the meeting and go over it. I think that's more inclusive than not. And uh, you have told them, though, which they do know which emails were considered to be a violation. I've uh, given the board the interim verbal report and was going to give specific examples at a training session. They gave emails to to uh, this board, which I looked at a portion of. Right, but I mean, do you feel it's necessary, or do you feel that you could just say this this one, this one, and this one were violations, or you felt were violations, without going into a whole meeting? I think uh, examples can be provided. There are actually an outstanding right to mow law request that I intend to respond to in a okay. week or so. So those will be done. Right. Right. And on the the bill. I agree on the bill that it was it's not a legal contract. Nobody here signed a legal contract. Nobody Correct. here engaged a, a legal firm to uh, right. get any legal and advice. That, I think they're not asking, you know, they don't think, they, the budget committee doesn't think it should be paid either, but I think they were just wondering if town council wouldn't mind calling attorney Gould because there was communication saying there wouldn't be any bills. And that did go to you, correct? Correct. So they were just wondering if they could maybe he could follow up on it. Okay. I don't mind. Why a bill I don't mind following up. Why we're getting a bill versus when they told us there wasn't going to be yeah. one. Right. I don't okay. mind following up on that. Okay. I'd like to know why as well. All right. Good. So, do we need a? a mo we don't need a motion or a vote on that, do we? I think it sounds like the board's in consensus to me. Right. So we'll. So we should plan a, a meeting. A meeting a, 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 with. The NHMA, that's a Board of Selectmen's meeting, that will have a training session and will invite all the elected and public officials. Yeah. I think that's that's the consensus, yes? Yes, sir. All right. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Do we have any closing comments? I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Nothing. Motion to adjourn at 20, uh, 1957, sir. Second. Sounds like a favor. Comment. Good. Thank you.